Hello and welcome to USA Global TV and Radio. This is the It's Your Healthy Lifestyle Show, hosted by the founder of this platform, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and myself, Roland Friedel. How important is your health and fitness to you? We show you how you can easily eat healthier every day, how you can improve your fitness and recover much quicker after your exercises and workouts. Families will learn how to optimize their children's health and nutrition. And finally, you will also hear how you live a long, healthy and fit life into your old age. Join us here on It's Your Healthy Lifestyle. Hello and welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where we provide world-class education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and this is Mr. Roland Friedel, and our show today is It's Your Healthy Lifestyle. Roland, welcome to the program. Hello, hello to our audience, and hello, Dr. Jacqueline, and happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, my dear friend. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's always good to be here to celebrate another one. That's for sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> Roland, you know, we are on new platforms. So I want to welcome our friends on Roku Worldwide, Amazon Fire and Instagram, as well as our loyal followers on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook and our website, of course. Tell people what it is that you do in reference to having a healthy lifestyle so that you can support them and their work. Oh. How much? How many hours do we have? <laughs> <Not like a laughs> long story short. Hello to everyone. Very lovely. Yeah. Um, well, for me, a healthy lifestyle is very, very important because I, I, I love to do so many things, you know, uh, uh, travel, explore the world, meeting friends, doing projects, so many, many stuff. Uh, so many, many stuff I'm doing. I'm so interested in so many different things. And for that, uh, I need a healthy mind and a healthy body, of course. So without any being sick, or I want to be in full power. That's why I, I should I absolutely take care about my personal health. What I'm doing is I, I guess I eat quite clean. I would say 80 percentage. Of course, once in a while, I have a glass of wine or I enjoy an ice cream or a croissant for breakfast, of course. But most of the time, I eat very clean. What I do I mean by eat very clean, I, don't, I eat, only eat non-processed food. So years ago, uh, it was just veggies. I was vegetarian and a vegan. And uh, for uh, two years, I, I got carnivores, so just clean, nothing from the supermarket, clean, organic, clean food, non-processed food, no artificial stuff like that. That's one thing. Secondly, things I work out on a daily base, meaning I'm not going four hours, five hours to the gym. I do it a little bit every day. I walk my dog every day, uh, so it's a good cardio for myself. And I do um, a 20, 30 minutes 
workout and stretching on a daily basis. And I try to get a lot of good sleep. That's the topic of today. So I come to this later. And I try to be happy. Um, what I mean is I'm collecting happy moments because nobody is 24 seven happy. So I'm collecting happy moments and I surround myself with positive people. So that's in the short. I love it. You are such an inspiration. And of course you are the one who got me interested and excited about juice plus. And of course I am taking juice plus it's over a year now. I think it's a year and two months. I'm also a distributor and I just love the effects of taking juice plus. So thank you for that. And this is your 30th year. Yes, actually in, in June, it's 30 years I'm taking Just Plus, and on the 24th of September, it's going to be 30 years to become the, uh, when I signed up as a distributor, yes. Three decades, can you imagine? <laughs> it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. I want to talk a little bit about that as well when we talk about getting good sleep. Sure. Now, here's something that I think is interesting, because someone will say, I had 10 hours of sleep. Now, have they slept through the whole time? I don't know. With me, I go to sleep at a certain time. I wake up at a certain time. But that doesn't mean I'm sleeping the whole time. So can you define for us what is good, air quotes, good sleep? A good sleep is when you have a deep sleep. So when um, I, I guess it's not about how many hours you sleep. Of course, we say a minimum is good for seven uh, seven hour more or less. Somebody needs more, somebody less necessary. But I think the more important is of, uh, than the hours is that you get in a deep sleep, that you get in this alpha state where we really are in a deep, deep uh, state. That that's more 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 important. So sometimes I only get four and a half hours, uh, but in a very deep sleep, and I'm absolutely refreshed. Sometimes I'm in bed for the night, nine hours, and I feel terrible because I couldn't find a good sleep. Like and it's funny for, that we have this uh, topic today, Dr. Jacqueline, because last night I didn't get almost no sleep <laughs> because we had a heavy storm here between. Yeah, 11 p.m. And, and 4 a.m. in the morning. So um, there was a huge break of my sleep. So I get a few hours before and a few hours later. Um, and and, and I, was, I didn't feel comfortable today, but now I'm fine again. But uh, to answer your question is, it's it's not only about hours, it's about the quality of time, meaning how deep you're sleeping. Um, are, are you dreaming good stuff or um, what's going on? In that? And, and I will also tell you what, what, is, what are the... Uh, what you should consider to, uh, to get a good sleep as possible. What, what are the circumstances to make to make sure that you get a good sleep? Excellent, thank you. And by the way, I know some people they can literally fall asleep standing up. They can fall asleep on a plane or on a bus. Does it matter where you are to get good sleep, or it's just the fact that your mind is at rest and you are deep in slumberland? Well, I can also nap on an airplane or on a train or in a chair or something. I can I couldn't do that, but it's not. This is not an, a really good sleep for myself. It's just a short uh, get a short break. Let's say a short break, but for deep sleep, <coughs> sorry for that. I I want to be first of all. I want to be by myself or with a partner, but I sleep better by myself. So I want to be myself or with a partner or even a partner. I want a lot. I need a lot of space. That's one thing. Secondly, is what I can't stand at all in my sleeping area is any uh, what do you say any a, any gadget. So no TV set. Well, I, I don't have a TV set at all, but no TV set, uh, no iPads or tablets or just nothing. So no no electric stuff, no electric smoke. That's that's what is important for me. I also do uh, switch off my phone. I always go on flight modes with all my my images when I get asleep. I need it dark. Uh, it's I, we all know. I learned it from from a, a professor years ago who, who was uh, searching about insomnia. People who can sleep, what it needs to get a good sleep is so no gadgets around. Uh, I do, I before I I go to sleep. Let's say the last 20, 30 minutes. I don't. I'm not on inter. I'm not on any social media. I'm not watching a, a movie or something like that. So really, calm down. I do a, a kind of meditation. We can talk about this a little bit later. I take care that it's dark. The darker it is, the, the, the better it is. So actually, this is a challenge for many people because there's so much light pollution, especially when you live in a city. It's always very light outside. Uh, so I have it very dark. And what is also important is temperature. 
most people have it too warm and then it's not also not good to get a good deep sleep i agree with you i like to have it very dark and i like it to be cold because i find that's the way that i i sleep much better but you know what's interesting when you think about hot warm temperatures that puts people to sleep because they're so i guess maybe they're dehydrated and and it's easy to fall asleep if you're out in the sun for example if you're lying on a beach or you're out somewhere then you just fall asleep i don't know maybe you're so relaxed that could be it as well yeah. well people yeah of course when when, it, when you're not used to the warm of course you get i would say you get sleepy yeah you get tired you get sleepy yeah because if especially when you don't drink enough uh water you get sleepy of course you because you de you dehydrate uh but when you look at people um who sleep and not used to the warm climate yeah uh, of course they're sleepy but they move around many many times in bed so there are a lot of scientific studies that they move around they're sweating they're moving around and they sleep a little bit but not really very deep yeah not very deep they're sleepy yeah. and tired but they don't sleep deep it's interesting roland when i look back to i'm going to say 10 years ago i remember that i was working in my corporate career i also was running a store on ebay i was running 60 auctions a week and i was also working part-time as a makeup artist maybe it was more than 10 years ago and then i was packaging up all the things that i was selling and i was shipping them directly and i was getting four hours of sleep i was also going for my doctorate so it was in 20 11 or so so the point being that i thought i was really cool because i didn't need any sleep i was getting maybe four hours of sleep and i was getting everything done so how does that work do you think that we can sort of be sleep deprived for a period of time and fully functioning or are we just kidding ourselves well, we, we cannot sleep in advance for the for the next week. <laughs> that's that's impossible. <laughs> but, but I was the same, you know. When I was in my my twenties and my thirties, I had I had weeks and sometimes months. I didn't sleep more than three four hours because I was building up companies. Or I was working a lot, traveling a lot. I I I didn't sleep much. But to be honest, I was so motivated. <laughs> I had no desire for sleep because I was so I don't know. I was so excited, so motivated, so inspired by my businesses. But as I'm getting older, I said, okay, I need more breaks. Um, then when I moved to the south, um, I I I learned from from the people living there in Spain and Italy having a nap in the afternoon. So after after lunch, going for half an hour, thirty minutes for napping, that helped me. But it, it, in general, it's not healthy if you don't sleep too much. Of course, you can do it because your body is an amazing, amazing concept. You know, I mean, I mean, it even doesn't kill you when you eat all this crap you know, <laughs> uh, that you put in your body. So your body can really handle a lot of stuff. Your body can also handle when you don't sleep much, but it's not healthy. And we know, especially in the military, um, who, who was with the military, when, when, you, when you're in a war and you, you get in prison, uh, that sometimes uh, they try to, how, how to call it in English, when they go on... When they torture you, one of the hardest torture is uh, you can't sleep. Yeah, they put you in jail uh, with bright light, a lot of noise, and, and always when you want to fall asleep, they disturb you. It's it's a torture. You get all absolutely crazy if you don't get sleep for a long time. You get absolutely crazy. It breaks absolutely your mind. So sleeping is very important. Of course, for a short period of time, we can sleep less. Um, I did the same, to be honest, and I did the same other shit, to be honest. When I was young, but it was not a healthy way, to be honest. So do you think that when you, you're used to not getting a lot of sleep, like even in educational scenarios, maybe you're going to university, you're going to college, and you're not doing the work during the semester, and all of a sudden you're cramming for those finals and you're taking things to keep you awake. How long do you think it takes before your body starts to reject or react to being sleep deprived? Well, it, it, it depends on, on, on different circumstances. It depends on your age, on, on your sex. It depends on what you're eating. I mean, when you eat very, very healthy, when I mean, you're very, very clean, then it's easier. Uh, when you work out a little bit, so you get out in nature, you walk a little bit, you run a little bit, you cycle a little bit, so you get a lot of oxygen in nature. That's working too. But it, it depends on the circumstances. 
um, as I said, I was always I always tried to eat clean. Um, I was not not a he heavy alcohol drinker even in my young in my young years or my students years. So this was not an issue for me to sleep less because I had a fit a fit and healthy body. But when you don't have a fit and healthy body like most people do, then it's an issue. Then it's an issue. Yeah, yeah, because that's definitely true. And and one thing that you and I have uh, you you and I have talked about before is that, for example, with me, I work out a lot, and it's hard work. It's good quality exercise. But today, I had a big, giant piece of cake. <laughs> I'm going to say possibly 800 calories. I don't know, but it was big. So. I could go work out five or six times today if I had the time, which I don't. And that still won't negate the fact that I ate that and that wasn't healthy. So I think it's the same thing when it comes to sleeping. It's you have to do the work. You have to get the good sleep every day. You have to eat well. You can once in a while not get good sleep or once in a while not eat well, but you can't do it every single day because it will catch up with you. Absolutely, it's like with everything, you know. When when you when you have um, bad eating behaviors or whatever it is, it's all, it's all the same. Your your, your body can <coughs> sure, bridge the gap a little bit, but if it's too much, it's too much. And I have also, you know, sometimes I have days I go to bed, and within ten minutes I realize, oh, this night I'm not going to sleep. And then I wonder, I said, what's going on? Is something going on in my mind? No, it's not. I said, okay, I, the last three four days have been so relaxed, absolutely no stress. I was working out a little bit, but not too much because I I'm, I'm I figured out when I work a little bit, work out a little bit, it's fine. When I do too much, uh, it's not good for me. I cannot sleep, especially when I when I work out in the evenings. So I do it in the mornings most of the time. Uh, so, but sometimes I have so many relaxed days, even when I'm working, but so relaxed that my body doesn't have the desire to 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 sleep much because it's I'm not exhausted. I'm, I'm not exhausted. But. Uh, yeah. But yeah, general, I, I, sleep is very, very important. Absolutely. I love what you just shared. I think it's so interesting when you are lying in bed and you're you're exhausted, right? You just you think the minute you put your head on that pillow, you're going to be completely out. And then all of a sudden you realize I am not going to be sleeping tonight. And it's so frustrating. I know for me, I try meditating. I literally try counting sheep. But for some reason, they keep going into the fence instead of over the fence. And I just realized I'm going to be tossing and turning. And then maybe around 3 a.m. I fall asleep and get two good hours of sleep. So any suggestions when that happens and you realize that you're not going to have a good night's sleep, what do you do and does it work? Okay. Well, first of all, when, when I start realizing, oh, look, I, I can't sleep, then I'm waiting I don't know. I don't have a, a watch with me, but I'm waiting a less, more or less, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or half an hour. Because sometimes I just, if something is going on in my brain, I think about the day or the next day, and then and then finally I let go and I can't sleep. So I, I give it a chance for 20, 30 minutes and uh, uh, letting go. Do my meditation. What my meditation is just say thank you, thanking for this, for this beautiful moments I had during the day. So I just be grateful. And that's my, my meditation. And then I find out, okay, it's going to work or not. And when it's not going to work, uh, I, the, what I do is, uh, depending <laughs> um, where I am, is I, mostly I go out with my dog and do a go for a dog walk. That's most of the time. But sometimes my dog doesn't want me to <laughs> come with me. So, like, what the fuck? so I go by myself. I go, for a, a, I go for a walk. That's one thing. And then I sit down um, and, and I'm reading. So I'm not drinking coffee or, or alcohol or something like that. Um, I just sit down and drink water and I read as long as I, I feel comfortable and maybe I go for and then I go for a sleep later and I'm fine. So I to answer your question, I go for a walk most of the time. Uh and I'm I'm reading. But I'm not going on my on my tablet or my computer or my smartphone to check social media or or look for a movie or for something. Not at all. I don't do this. That's great information that you shared. I really appreciate it. And what I'm also wondering is when you have really good sleep, there are certain behaviors that you're very much putting into place every single day. And you've mentioned a number of them. 
One for me is that gratitude, that affirmation that the, uh, and so for me, I pray before I go to sleep and I'm always saying, thank you for everything I have. Thank you for this person, for that person, for these opportunities. And sometimes I'm exhausted because I'm so thankful for so many things that I end up falling asleep. So you also believe in giving thanks and gratitude. And so that might be something that people can bring into their own sleep routine. Yeah, because it satisfies me, to be honest. It makes it makes me happy. It satisfies me. And the point is, when I focus on things that I'm grateful for, meaning for the things I have, whatever it is, my friends, my health, whatever it is, I, I'm not focusing what I don't have. Because when I focus on what I don't have, I cannot sleep because I have to do this, I have to do this to get this, I have to do this, I have to do this. No, but it's just thankful. I end the day by just being grateful and focus on what I already have. And then I'm so full. I'm so nourished. Yes, that's beautiful. What do you think about the adage, never go to sleep angry? <laughs> Ask my partners. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, we have one of them here right now. They called in. No, I'm kidding. Tell us what no, you no, think. No, no. Well, I'm a, well, depending of, uh, <laughs> depending of, the, of the level of your personal development, I, I suggest because I, from my own experience is when you have an argue and you, you can't sleep both, uh, it's not working. So I try, if my partner is willing to, uh, I try to, to really to, to get up again and, and, and get out. First of all, get out of the dormitory, get out of the dormitory, get out to bed and sit in the living room wherever and have a discussion, a clear, a clear communication, never in bed. I, I don't want to have this energy in bed. But I only do it when my partner says, okay, let's, let's clarify it because we both know Otherwise, it's going around the head. We cannot sleep, so it does. So we get up, cup of tea or whatever, or herbal tea, or whatever, and we we are lighting on a, a candle, and and then we had this in the, in the in the past, and then we have a conversation about this and figure it out. Mostly, I like that uh, a lot, and I also like the idea. As you know, I teach people how to listen, and one of my courses is setting boundaries and asking permission. So something that I would like to just put out there is the idea of, okay, you and I are, we've got this thing that is, we both feel different ways about, I don't want to go to bed angry, I don't want you to go to bed angry, let's make a plan to talk about it tomorrow at some point, instead of staying up till two, three, four o'clock in the morning, what are your thoughts about that? Well, if you really can, get, well, first of all, both have to commit on whatever it is. <laughs> if, you, if you fix it now or tomorrow, uh, both have to commit on this, because otherwise, you know, uh, I mean, if you if you can really can let it go until tomorrow, or the day after, whenever you you sit together, and you really can let you go, yeah, it's a good strategy, of course. Uh, it's also it also might be good to cool down your emotions to get out of the red zone into the blue zone. It can also be good, but sometimes, to be honest. It goes around, 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 around. Uh, actually, we have to try. I think everybody has to try it out. What work, works best for both parties? I guess that's the most important thing. Yeah, sort it out immediately, or sort it out the next day, or whatever. I mean, when you live together with a partner, I guess you can sort it out immediately, and and it's not about you know sorting it out for three, four hours. Maybe it's just a short communication. <laughs> Maybe it's just a, a few minutes or half an hour, or whatever. It's true. And, and have you ever had a situation, Roland, where something seemed to be so important and you were on completely opposite sides of your partner in terms of how you thought about it? And then a couple of days later, you thought to yourself, wow, this is insane. I can't believe I was so upset about this and lost an entire night's sleep over it. Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, we're all human beings, you know, and somebody, sometimes you're really triggered, you know, we're in a bad mood and many different circumstances that are challenging and then somebody says something to you or you have an argument and then it's a huge trauma. Yeah, this is normal. But what I learned is I, what I do is I, I, I just observe myself and said, what, what, what the fuck are you doing here, Roland? Is this the, is this the little Roland or the adult Roland that is behaving and talking? <laughs> who, who is behaving and talking? Uh, so I learned this over the time to observe myself. And, 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 and it is a learning process, to be honest, because I was, I was a trauma queen when I, yeah, I was a trauma queen. No, yeah. you a drama queen? Come on. I was, I was one. Yeah, I was one in the past. Yeah, absolutely. 
I wouldn't say drama queen, but but uh, 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 the little Rose was talking, not the mature one. You know, this little boy was talking. This little boy that didn't get, didn't receive the love from the parents when it was small, didn't, didn't get the attention. It came through many many years, but I overcame it with a lot of um, conversations. Um, yeah, talking to in in men's groups and stuff like that, and working on myself. Yeah, but I was yeah like like all like all others. Many men still are when I see you. Well, I give you a lot of credit on your evolution. And something I wanted to bring up is sometimes we label ourselves, I'm not a good sleeper. And then we, it's almost like we're taking that on as a persona. And then, of course, we're not sleeping well because we've labeled ourselves as that. We're taking that in. So what would you say to anyone out there who is actively saying, I'm not a good sleeper? I would ask the person first if I if I if I want want to be the same like you if I don't if I also want to be not a good sleeper what do I have to do just to, then think about it how, how stupid this is what they're talking about <laughs> no but no, to make it serious I was I don't know it was about ten years ago or longer and I was in, in, on the Bahamas and I joined a workshop I forgot the name it, it's a very famous American doctor. He's a specialist on insomnia, and he did a three-day workshop about getting a good sleep or cannot sleep and stuff like that. And, and, and he said two funny things. Or, no, it's not right. Two interesting. First of all, you cannot fall asleep. It's impossible. You cannot force yourself to sleep. It's not working. What you can do is giving up to be awakened. And that's a different approach. Say it again, giving up? To be awake. To be awake. Okay, so you're surrendering? Yeah, yeah. It, it means if you force it, I have to sleep, I have to sleep, that's not working because as long as you really have to sleep, you're awake. And when you're awake, you cannot sleep. So you just have to let go to surrender. That's right. the first thing. Because uh, we all experience this during the day that we're not 100% awake the whole day. We're more or less in a trance. You know, you remember you're driving there, you're driving the highway, somebody calls you and they said, Where are you? you said, oh, no idea where the last 20 miles have been. So actually, we're in a daily trance. So he said, if you if you try to force yourself to fall asleep, this is never gonna working because when you try to force yourself, you are awake, you are thinking that's not working. So the only thing you have to give, you have to give up being awake. That's one thing. That was an interesting approach. It brings up, it puts a lot of stress away. That's yeah, I've never heard that me. before. That's that's really interesting. Now, yeah. something else I want to touch on, because not everyone has that gift of being able to fall asleep. People have health issues, sleep apnea, for example. I mean, I have ulcerative colitis, which we're not going to go into that, but sometimes it's hard to get a good night's sleep because you're running. So what what can you do? In I mean, I can say some things that I've done, but what suggestions do you have for people who have health issues that are really preventing them from getting a good night's sleep? Well, I, mean, I had this the same when I had some aberrations, and you know that I don't I, I don't take any bills against a painkiller or something like that. Uh, it's not because I love pain; it's because uh, I want the feedback of my body. Otherwise, I would move around too much whenever I had a surgery, or so the, the, the pain gives me feedback. Keeps you. So I try to be in, a, in the best position I ever can to sleep, even with the pain. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a fan of sleeping pills. And this was also interesting by this, by this, by this doctor, by this professor. And you know, I, I'm not a scientist. I don't know if it's true or not, but he said it very serious. He said, go away from sleeping pills. And he said, and I, I, no, I have no proof it's working or not. I have no idea. I never used one. He said, sleep. You, the only thing sl sleeping pills do is they work, the sleeping pills work on your receptors on in, in the brain. So it, because most people, um report that when they're taking sleeping pills that they don't feel good in the morning they're not really awake in the morning they're not really fit in the morning and what he says i cannot prove it i'm not a scientist he says is what the sleeping pill does was the industry does to you it's not that you sleep better or you sleep what it does is you forgot in the morning that you didn't have sleep well it's an interesting approach too it's a very interesting approach. And, you know, it reminds me of something that's on a different a different subject. But when you think about 
people taking caffeine or drinking caffeine within so many hours before they go to sleep, people become so dependent on sleeping pills or on caffeine. And the example I want to bring up in reference to caffeine is recently I was uh, somewhere going to do a workout and someone was talking about the fact that they didn't have any coffee and they were hoping they were going to be able to push themselves. I gave up caffeine. I never had coffee in my entire life, not a single cup of coffee ever. I only had iced tea, but it's been at least, I'm going to say six years now. So I'm always drinking water. I don't need caffeine to give me that surge. But I think when you're, you're so used to that, or you're so used to taking sleeping pills that there's a fear that what happens when I stop, am I going to not feel well? So if you think about giving up caffeine, I think when I did give it up six years ago, I think I had a headache maybe for a couple of hours and then it just went away and I got used to not having it. And the reason and I gave up caffeine was because I have ulcerative colitis. So you don't want your digestive process to be going all the time because of the caffeine. So how can someone who's taking sleeping pills, or there's even supplements out there, I think that are supposed to help you sleep or CBD oil, any of those things, I think in capsules, um, what can someone do to wean themselves off of it? Because you start having a conversation with yourself that's going to keep you up awake as well, probably thinking about getting off of them. Yeah, absolutely. Man, first of all, I'm not a, a medical doctor. I know that me, uh, some people are taking melatonin. It's 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 that should help. I have, I have no experience on that because I don't take anything, if it's natural or not, except uh, the supplement. Um, well, the point is that Jaylen, that it's not only then when when we go to bed that we have this monkey mind. Most people are just thinking the whole day, so. Actually, their their mind, their ratio is in control of them and not their heart or their their soul. That, that, that that's that's an issue in in our society at all. That we think too much. We think we think we think we think the whole day, and most most of the time, uh, we think about things that happened in the past and feel shame and guilty, feel shame and guilt, or we think about things in the future that can happen possibly, and are scared. So we are always thinking, thinking, thinking. We're not, in the, we're not living in the present moment. And the more you're in the present moment, I that, that, that's my strong belief and my own experience from my, my own life. The more I'm in the present moment, uh, meaning I'm grateful for what I have, uh, without, uh, um, instead of always looking what I don't have. It doesn't. No, 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 it doesn't mean that I don't have goals or vision. It just means I focus what I already have, and of course I, I keep working. But since I do this being grateful and, and 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 focus on the present moment the sleep is also much better and and, and to be honest also when i started with just plus uh, 30 years ago my sleep also my rest and my sleep also got better but uh, i think gen in general people think too much and of course they, they cannot stop when they go to bed they cannot stop it's going on what i have to do tomorrow or why did this or who said to me this and what happened this and what this always these why questions looking back and in the future, what I have to do, you know, all this, this bucket list and the do lists and yeah. we're so driven by these things. Sorry? Yeah. All, in addition to that, some of the other things that keep people awake are guilt, revenge, keeping yeah. tabs on what other people are doing or how somebody let you down or there's all kinds of reasons why our mind won't stop. Or maybe we have something big the next day that we have to do and we're afraid because we're probably not prepared. And a, an easy example is, let's say you're going to give a TEDx speech or you're a keynote speaker. If you know your material, you might be able to have a great night's sleep because you're prepared. If you're not prepared, you're going to be a nervous wreck and probably up for some of the, right. some of the evening. Yeah, but it's an interesting uh, aspect of uh, being uh, thinking about revenge. I, I was the same in my my twenties and thirties. You know, when something happened, or or have, um, that I was thinking in the night how I can push back, or having a strategy when the person to say so, I do this. <laughs> you know, all these theory strategies for events that at the end mostly never happened, like I was thinking about it. And what I learned is that uh, no, go to bed, fix it tomorrow. When there's something to fix, fix it tomorrow. It has absolutely low value to waste my time and energy. But this was a learning process for me to just to let go and trust the process. And, and the point is, if there's an issue, the issue is there tomorrow too. So why why worry about the day and the night? Why worry?
<laughs> and and by the way, I want to suggest something else. It is possible that a person is not getting a good night's sleep because of their environment, as we were talking about the temperature or the lighting. And you may have to make some adjustments to the area where you're sleeping. And I know there are people that are experts in feng shui and they can help you with that. And there's books on it, of course. And I'm sure there's YouTube videos, but it may be a result of your environment. Of course, yeah, of course, uh, it can happen. Uh, so what I learned is that I have my, my head in the north and not in the south when I sleep. So when, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is um, when, I, when I've been living in a house or apartment is when I don't know how to say it in English, when you have this, this water lines go uh, going under you, some people have really problems on that, sleeping on this water lines. This you mean a water bed? Yeah, 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 something like that. That's not good. Um, and funny thing but it's it's all it made a different i learned this and it made a different when you're a couple in bed man always on the right side the lady on the left really what's the rationale yeah. behind that it it comes from from i don't know i learned it from when i when i did a, a training many many years ago about uh how, how to say it in english when you when you when you when you learn about your ancestors and your families and bring it in order man on the right lady on the left hmm. and since then so it's on, on on the hard side much better sleep so you in the right you in the correct position man on the right lady on your left it's now what if you're by yourself you sleep in the middle of the bed sorry if you're by yourself do you sleep in the middle of the bed uh in my relationship status yeah sometimes i just live across <laughs> 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 yeah, of course. Yeah, like here, I'm, I'm alone, like here. So <laughs> I see my girlfriend when I come back in April. Yeah, but when when we together, I'm but I'm on the right side, she's on the left side, and head always in the north, if possible. Okay, yeah. I can Fantastic. feel the difference. So, Roland, I'm so glad that we were able to discuss the importance of sleep. I'd love to close out with you giving a little bit of a background about Juice Plus and then also your work for your uh, podcast that you have and any other information you want to share with our audience. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chaley. Yeah, the audience, uh, because we, we mentioned several times uh, in the beginning, Juice Plus. Well, it's Juice Plus. As the name says, more than Juice, Juice Plus more. Uh, just plus is is it's not a miracle pill it's it's not a pharmaceutical it's not uh it's not a vitamin bill it's 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 a it's the the powder of 10 different fruits 10 different vegetables and 10 different berries and and there's an omega product so what it is is just plus is the best as close to nature as when you're eating fresh fruits vegetables without any herbicide pesticide non-gmo uh so it helps me on a daily basis to bridge the gap between what I should eat on a daily basis and what I'm actually eating on a daily basis on these huge amounts of fruits and vegetables raw. Um, so this is Juice Plus. So Juice Plus is, there's a fruit capsule with 10 different fruits. Uh, there's a, a veggie capsule with 10 different veggies and there's a berry capsule with 10 different berries and grapes. And what the company does is they grow this, um, this different fruits and vegetables and berries and grapes, harvest them at the highest point, uh, choose them immediately, make it, making a juice out of it, and then preserves the juice by putting the whole water out. And this powder is in the capsule, and you swallow this capsule with a lot of water. The capsule open in your stomach. The powder mixes with the water, and your body is observing the, the juice of 30 different fruits and vegetables every single day. Can you imagine? You have the ingredients of 30 different fruits, vegetables, and berries every single day on the highest form in your body. That's just plus. It's not taking away the responsibility to eat healthy. So eat as healthy as you can, but it's bridging the gap. And when you look at me, I'm, I've become 60 years. I have absolutely no health issues. I'm fit because it's a, a part of my life since 30 years. So as I mentioned in the beginning, in June, it's going to 30 years taking juice plus. That's super. It's a supplement, a natural supplement. It's not artificial. It's natural. Uh, and it's proven. So it's practical. It's easy to take. It's easy to take. It's working. There are many, many studies out of there. If you want more, please contact Dr. Jacqueline at USU Clever to Win Radio. She will uh, show you the, the style. Many, many studies out there. It's practical. It's working. And the most important thing, it's also affordable on a daily basis. It's cheaper than a coffee at this 
coffee place, this hippie coffee place, I always say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that's just plus. Um, yeah, about my work. Well, what, what I do is I, I come from a consulting coaching, coaching background for many, many years. I started men's work and we had, by the way, we had an amazing show. Please go on YouTube, on YouTube uh, USA Global TV and Radio uh, and sign up there. Sign up there. Um, put the, uh, put the in, in, in inscribe button and the bell. And when you go in and say Wild at Heart, you find a lot of shows we did with men. And so last year I made a decision. I want to also do this in German with, because there's a, a need in German. Many men want to uh, improve themselves, becoming real men again. And so I do a podcast uh, called Roller Media on YouTube, but just in German, for, uh, about a lot of men's work. That's that's the work I'm dedicated to. I do a lot of stuff for the environment. I'm very into health issues. Help, <coughs> sorry, helping people with health, health issues, getting fit. That's the work. And if you want to go in contact for me, the best thing is send me an email at office at rolandfriedel.com. I spell it for you. My name is R O L A N D F R I E D L dot com. Thanks a lot and feel more than welcome to contact me. It's all about, that's what we hear also on USA Global TV and Radio. It's all about sharing and caring and bringing people together. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Roland. I appreciate you and look forward to seeing you momentarily for our next show, which is the Mallorca Connection. Yes, we continue with shame and guilt, I think. We, we will, definitely. Yes. So I'll see you shortly. Thank you and bye-bye to everyone. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you, everyone, wherever it is that you're watching. We really would appreciate if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is USA Global TV and Radio. If you're on Roku Worldwide, please download our app, USA Global TV and Radio. The same thing on Amazon Fire, USA Global TV and Radio. We have our next show coming up, the Mallorca Connection, which will be followed by the Listening Mentor and then by the Perfect Podcast Show. So please stay tuned. And now we're turning over to our sponsors. We are truly grateful for each and everyone. Thank you. Women of the Caribbean and around the world, are you tired of the status quo? Tired of barely making ends meet? Tired of giving maximum effort for minimum results? Are you in need of change, a fresh start, a new outlook, a new perspective? It's time to break through. Join us along with women from around the world at the Empower Her Escape five-day all-inclusive royal cruise to the Bahamas and Florida. Connect with world leaders and influencers and begin afresh your journey to more. Hear dynamic speakers with sessions on women in leadership, the importance of mentorship, how to start a business from the ground up, financial literacy, an integrated approach to wellness and wholeness, and so much more. Guest speakers include First Lady Anne-Marie Davis of the Bahamas, her Royal Highness, Katerina of Yugoslavia, Lady de Silva. Her Royal Highness, Queen Sekothali Mepheina of South Africa. And Coach Max, Global Multi Six Figure Wealth Coach. Cruise packages include two nights at an all exclusive resort, gratuities, taxes, and port fees, red carpet welcome and extravaganza, course materials, and a souvenir gift bag. Flight not included. The Empower Her Escape Cruise takes place on May 15th through the 19th, 2024, departing from the Port of Palm Beach, Riviera Beach, Florida. Hosts for this life-changing event are Coach Cherish Hollingsworth of Florida and Coach Mercy Gilbert of the UK. For more information, visit our website at www.empowerherroyalescape.com or call us at 954-203-6608. Or email us at cherishresiliencecoach at gmail.com. Connect, collaborate, celebrate at the Empower Her Escape Cruise. USA Global TV and Radio proudly presents our partner and sponsor, Mr. Philip Sykes and the British School of Excellence. Building confidence changing lives and now proudly presenting the polished professional on a transformative journey with the british school of excellence's comprehensive suite of masterclasses crafted to elevate your professional and personal life eight outstanding modules will elevate you to the next level module one exploring life's purpose delves into the depths of self-discovery, guiding you to 
chart your unique path to fulfillment and success. Module two, mastering professional presence and confidence. This masterclass is a deep dive into the art of self-assurance and commanding presence, which is essential for standing out in today's competitive landscape. Module three, learn the secrets of visual impact, how to curate a personal style that amplifies your professional brand. Module four, mastering professional etiquette and communication excellence, navigating the nuances of corporate interaction with grace and tact. Module five, elegance and eloquence. We impart powerful techniques to captivate and persuade any audience with your oratory skills. Module six, unlock the potential of your emotional intelligence, EQ, and harness the ability to connect, empathize, and lead with emotional savvy. Module seven, mastering DISC, building a gateway to understanding behavioral styles, fostering better personal and professional relationships. Module eight, mastery and dining etiquette, building your confidence to perfect the subtleties of dining with finesse, enhancing your social savviness at any table. Step into the Polish Professional Program where poise, elegance and excellence aren't just taught, they're instilled for life. Join us to redefine your potential and polish your professional edge. To learn more, go to thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. The British School of Excellence are investors in people. Let us invest in you.